Western Isles of Scotland in search of corncrake. Unfortunately, Lewis passed in a blur of wind, rain, mist, and only a faint tantalising sound of corncrake, but nevertheless some reasonable views of divers. We saw both Great Northern and these red-throated divers. Travelling south, we arrive at Harris, a much more mountainous island. With brighter weather, it was more enjoyable to take in the moonscape-type terrain of Harris. However, it also has lovely sandy beaches, uninhabited apart from this flock of oyster catchers and the occasional sheep. Another day and another ferry to take us on to our next stop, North Uist. The island is mainly flat and covered with a patchwork of peat bogs, low hills and lochens. Oyster catchers and redshank were feeding on some of the cultivated fields. On much of the pasture there are sheep, but amongst those sheep we were pleased to see numerous golden plover in full breeding plumage. Although on the face of it this could be suitable breeding habitat, these wimbrel have probably stopped off on their way to Iceland to breed. Balranald, the RSPB reserve famous for its corncrakes. The air was full of the sound of lapwing, fighting off gulls and crows as they tried to get at their chicks. We watched this one for some time, but were concerned that it may not last much longer with so many predators around. We battled the wind to walk round the reserve. We were rewarded with seeing several waders, including this Dunlin, and mating Redshank. With still no view of Corncrake, we move on to South Uist. A walk along the coast produces rock pipit foraging amongst seaweed and a group of sanderling doing their usual dashing around on the edge of the water. Much less energetic is an oyster catcher and some ring plover. And just offshore is great northern diver, some shell duck and some seals. A family of grey lags swim towards the shore where a pair of megansers lie preening. It's now dusk and a strange sound echoes over the moorland. It's a short-eared owl calling. We move on to Barra, and yes, this is an airport on the beach. We left the airport to continue our search for corncrake. While waiting and hoping for our corncrake, we were entertained by this calf feeding greedily from its mother. However, again a tantalising sound of corncrake, but not a bird in sight. Having had good views of this wheat here and listened to distant corncrakes, we suddenly spot one in the long grass. It's obviously affected by the calling of the others, and now it starts answering back. Only the males call, and this is to proclaim their territory. Just calling and moving closer to an intruder is usually enough to see it off. Unfortunately, we're running out of time and have to leave quickly to catch the ferry from Barra to Tyree. We feel we are less likely to see corncrake on Tyree and so settle down to watch lapwing, oyster catchers, linnets in gauze, turnstone on rocks and some more flocks of sanderling and dunlin.
As well as many birds, Tyree also has lovely sandy beaches and beautiful blue seas. We do find some new birds for the islands, like these little terns, and then some cliff nesting species like former and raven. Travelling round the island we also spot this hare grooming and many twite amongst the scrub. We leave Tyree with sightings of stone chat, pipits and cuckoo and move on to Col, where we quickly find this lake with very active grey lag geese and other wildfowl. However, Col is one of our target islands in our search for corncrake and we're not disappointed. The RSPB has a reserve managed primarily for breeding corncrake. The Skylark tried to compete from the top of a fence post, but all around us was the sound of corncrake. The corncrake is widespread across most of Europe and Russia, but in Britain it is one of our rarest birds. Numbers have declined rapidly over the last few decades owing to the early cutting of grasslands. Corncrakes winter in Africa and on their return favour the iris beds in Scotland for their breeding grounds. The birds feed on small invertebrates such as beetles, crane flies, earwigs and crickets and even worms. After nearly three weeks, we were now able to spend time watching these elusive birds and listening to their strange call across these windswept islands off the western coast of Scotland.